how can we look at the world as beautiful in the midst of so much grief heartbreak and trauma. This is a very important topic to me because I love talking about romanticizing life and mindset, wellness, meditation, how it can lead us to living as our most mindful, happier selves. It's important that I help teach people how to transform a victim mindset. I've learned from years and years, decades of personal experience. I talk a lot about romanticizing life on my channel. I also talk a lot about trauma and really heavy real life lessons, things that real life people go through that I feel like need to be talked about, need to be addressed, and how we can heal from those things, mind, body, and soul, how I have healed from those things, how I want to help teach others to heal those things, to live happier lives, more present and mindful. Basically, I want this video to be about how to heal the world by healing yourself. Some of you may not resonate with this, but when I got this video, idea it came in the form of like an extreme download I was journaling I'd been meditating I'd been in a very like spiritual mindset that day I felt very connected I pulled out my journal and I just wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote couldn't get it out fast enough like when I get in these states I cannot type fast enough if I'm typing it on my phone and my notes or if I'm writing it like my words get all scribbled because I, I just have so much to get out once I looked at what I had written I was like I need to make a video about this. I like to call things like that downloads from the universe. Not everyone resonates with that. Some people envision that as God, prayer, and other people envision that as intuition and gut instinct. It's all the same thing in my opinion. First things first is I used to spend hours on hours, days, weeks, years of my time worked up, ranting, and feeling worried about the state of the world. There's just so much that's not fair. There's so much much cruelty. It didn't make sense to me and I would spend so much of my time thinking about it. How can we help it? I would feel hopeless about it. You know, how are we going to solve world peace and world hunger? It felt hopeless. And there's so many things that people don't talk about. Things we need to talk about and bring awareness to. However, it took me many years to realize an extremely important lesson when it comes to this. That in order to heal the world and in order to help others, even in order to help your community, and your immediate family. In order to do that, you have to first help yourself. You have to heal yourself first. You have to work on that first. Pour your cup first. Feed yourself first. Put your own oxygen mask on first. You cannot do anything in the efficient manner that you want to, to pour love into others until you have poured that into yourself. And I learned that if I want to truly help heal the world, the best, possibly only way for me to do that was to be my own first priority. A lot of people in the spiritual community I feel like refer to this as vibrating as your highest self, being in touch with your inner being. In other words, by tending to my own inner being and taking care of myself and my own world, I will in turn be able to show up as my best self to heal others and help others day in and day out. We cannot help anyone if we don't first start caring for ourselves, our basic needs, food, water, shelter, and move up the hierarchy of needs. Make sure that you are feeding yourself, taking meal breaks, resting, drinking enough water. All these things are essential to taking care of ourselves. It was a hard pill for me to swallow that ranting about the world's problems for hours on end is not going to fix them. There is a difference between bringing awareness to a situation that needs attention and dwelling on a situation and ranting to a point that does not serve you and in turn does not serve the collective. We cannot help anyone to our fullest potential if we are exhausted, we're burnt out, we're hungry, we're thirsty, we're sleepy. It's important when thinking about the state of the world and getting all wrapped up in it to remain hopeful, remain faithful that things are working out in your favor even when it doesn't seem like it. Find optimism in the situation. Find things that feel good in every moment. Make that a habit. Ingrain it into your subconscious to where you subconsciously look for the good in everything. Talking about world situations to bring awareness is one thing, but dwelling on things and getting worked up and getting lost in the sauce isn't going to help anyone and it keeps you from being able to help others. It keeps you from peace and in the end it only causes 
causes more conflict. But this is something we all do. We all can get wrapped up in things. It doesn't mean that we need to cut that out and never do it. All I'm saying is we need to bring awareness to it when we are. Bring awareness to maybe I'm getting too worked up. Maybe I'm getting lost in losing the point. Maybe I've neglected my self-care in thinking about this topic. Maybe it's time to go back to that. Maybe it's time to center myself. Bring awareness to whatever is going on presently and then make moves to fix it and then make moves to keep the momentum going. I'm a firm believer that by raising our frequencies, by being happier, tending to ourselves and just living our happiest self, our happiest lives, we will literally in turn raise the frequencies and vibrations of our community, of those around us, of the collective, of the world. And by leading by example, we inspire others to follow our lead like a lighthouse. You know, like a lighthouse, you will be the light guiding people who are lost at sea, lost in their emotions, lost in the dark. You will be that light to shine as an example that I can shine and get out of there too. You can as well. And then simply by being alive, we help heal the world. Now here's another main huge point that is a really hard pill to swallow. If you've been through a lot of trauma, you've seen a lot of things in your life, felt a lot of grief and a lot of pain and a lot of suffering, it is so incredibly hard sometimes times. Not to blame your life circumstances or other people for you not being where you want to be in your life. It is so hard not to see yourself as a victim to your life and to your circumstances. It is so hard to realize and accept that your happiness is in your hands. It's your decision and it is a choice. It's a skill and that you can actually choose to be happy despite everything you've been through. It's important to recognize that your thoughts become your feelings, which in turn inspire your actions. The actions we take determine the reality we live in our day-to-day -day life. This habitual pattern creates your beliefs, which is the lens through which you experience and see the world. It is how you feel about life itself. It is literally how you live your life based off what you believe to be true. Our beliefs are the lens through which we see our life. However, our beliefs aren't always fact. They aren't always true and they aren't always serving us. So to change your reality, to change your life, you must first start with your thoughts. Where do you start with your thoughts? Monitoring your thoughts, becoming aware, bringing awareness. How do you do that? Meditation. Meditation teaches you how to observe, observe your thoughts rather than becoming them. To change your thoughts, you have to first observe them and become aware. Then you can redirect your thoughts to what you want to believe. You do this enough, you will create the actions and then you will create the habits and then you will create new beliefs that do serve you. And these are based off thoughts you chose, okay? So that's how we become the creators of our reality. So to start with your thoughts, you must first become aware and step into the position of the observer, the observer of your thoughts and feelings. And then once you become aware, you choose which thoughts you want to have that are most conducive to the life you want to live. And the goal, this is very important, the goal is not to get rid of all your thoughts. It's not to get rid of your negative thoughts. It's to simply become aware and redirect. It's simply about becoming aware of the thoughts that don't serve you and focusing on the thoughts that do serve, choosing to focus on those, making that a habit. That is, in my opinion, manifestation at its core. And meditation simply is a tool that can teach you how to observe these thoughts. And when a thought comes up, you simply redirect. And the more that someone practices meditation, the more this becomes a subconscious habit. Meditation is not the absence of thoughts. It is the moment that you notice yourself being distracted and then you gently bring your attention back to your breath or back to your mantra. That is meditation. That is the practice. The moment you realize that your thoughts have drifted because they inevitably will. Okay, what is it? We have like a million thoughts a day, 50,000, I don't know. We have a lot of thoughts going through our mind of the day. It's about stepping out of that and the moment you notice you start to go back into 
it redirecting. It's not about beating yourself up because you got distracted. It, meditation is simply noticing when you do get distracted, redirecting back. That is successful meditation. Back to your breath, back to your mantra, whatever it may be. There's so many different ways to practice meditation. It's not about getting rid of the bad negative feelings or thoughts. It is about being willing to feel them. It is about being respectful of them, knowing that they have their place and knowing that they do serve us to some extent. Learning to accept what you feel and practice being willing to feel it. Acceptance, willingness, surrender, respecting your feelings. Feel your feelings when you feel them. Be willing to feel your feelings and choose to focus on good thoughts and good feelings anyway. Choose to be grateful anyway. Choosing to put your, the most focus on those good thoughts most of the time rather than negative thoughts most of the time. That is our choice. Everything we seek is within ourselves, not outside of ourselves, not in some external thing or achievement. This next part is about learning to trust that everything happens perfectly in divine timing and in your favor even when it really does not feel or seem like it. Think about how many things in the past that you've wanted so desperately to work out and then they didn't and then you look back on it one day and you're like I am so glad that didn't work out or maybe soon after an even better opportunity came up trust that it is true that things are happening in your favor even when it doesn't feel like it take inspired good action when you feel it but also rest have leisure have playtime have friends socialize and live your life without focusing so much on what you want and don't have practice gratitude for what you do have and what's to come for you. Even if you can just do this most of the time, it will tip the scales in your favor. We don't have to be thinking positive 100% of the day, all day, every day, but it is a choice that we can make regularly in our daily lives to feel good and live better. Bad feeling emotions have their place and need to be honored and respected too. Bad is just a perception after all. Everything is just your perception. One of my favorite examples of this is the story of the Chinese farmer. Now I'm not going to take the time to retell that story but you should look up the story of the Chinese farmer it's incredible practice acceptance practice willingness you have control over how you perceive things in your reality take small actions toward living the life you want every day and live in that vibration milk those moments for all they have and enjoy them enjoy then have the patience to watch the seeds that you've planted grow into plants that you can harvest and it's so important don't choose to live this way because you are wanting to get some external thing. Live life this way simply because it feels good. We deserve to feel good. Life is meant to feel good. Everything we ever seek outside of ourselves is because we think we will feel better in the attainment of it. Don't you think? Don't you think? Jim Carrey said something I really like. And that's the ending quote I will leave you on. Thought is just an illusory thing and how thought is responsible for, if not all, most of the suffering we experience. I'll leave you with that. Thanks guys.